Hello everyone, it's Mrs Sugden. Today's story is about a little robin. I don't know if you've noticed them hopping around in the garden or hopping around at the park. Beautiful little birds, aren't they? But today in our story, the little bird that we meet doesn't want to be a robin. This little bird wishes that she was a mouse. And if you're ready, I will begin. Let's put her in the tree so she can join in. There we go. And this is the story of Robin, Robin. If you're ready, I will begin. It all starts one dark and stormy night. Are you ready? Inside the egg, it was dark, but the storm outside was loud and close. There was a purr and a swoosh. The egg tumbled down and then stopped with a thump and a crack. What's that? said a small voice. Can we eat it? asked another. Of course not. It's a bird, said the third. A robin, I think, said the next. Oh, let's keep her, said the smallest voice. We can call her Robin. Chirp, said Robin, flapping her wings. She liked that idea. Robin, Robin. So can you see the mice? meeting the a little bird and being so kind. They're being nice, they are, aren't they? Inside the burrow, all was warm and the family spoke of crumbs. Now, I don't know about you, when I eat biscuits, I end up with lots of crumbs like this falling down. They get everywhere, don't they? Well, these little mice love the crumbs that the humans make. Red crumbs, whispered Dad. Pie crumbs, said Pip. Oh, biscuit crumbs, said Dink. The crumbly the better, chirped Robin, as she fluffed up her feathers into two mousy ears. The best crumbs were in the human house. To get to them, you had to be very sneaky, so as not to wake the cat. Can you see them dreaming about crumbs? And can you see them sneaking to the human house? I wonder if they'll get any. They've got to be careful because who's going to come along? <gasps> they mustn't wake the cat. Leave no trace. Go tiptoe pace when sneaking into the human house. Keep to the shadows and never be seen. Be quiet as a mouse, chirped Robin, a little too loudly. There was a chirp and a smash and a flutter and a crash. Robin had woken the dreaded cat. Don't worry, said Dad, we'll get crumbs next time. Come on, let's go. Oh, you always say that, said Robin. Can you see the cat has woken up? So the little mice have to run away very quickly. What will happen next? Rumble went the bellies in the burrow that night as the family dreamed of crumbs. But Robin lay wide awake. I just need to be more sneaky, she chirped, sliding down from her nook in the rooks, in the roots and stepping out into the snow. Leave no trace, go at tiptoe pace as I sneak into the human house. I'll keep to the shadows and I'll never be seen. I'll be as quiet as a... Can you see her sneaking off? But can you see another shadow? Who is that shadow of? The cat. Let's have a look. There was a chirp and a smash and a flutter and a crash. Robin jumped out of the back uh, door smack into a pair of black wings. Oh dear, said Magpie, follow me. Uh-oh, who did they wake up? It was the cat, wasn't it? Now Robin has bumped into a magpie. Will the magpie be kind and help, do you think? Let's have a look. The birds hid in Magpie's old tree. What were you doing in the human house, he asked. I was looking for crumbs, panted Robin. The humans, they have so many. 
The humans, said Magpie, calming himself. Yes, they have so much of everything. It's all because of the Crim Cross Star, hey? Yes, the Crim Cross... What? said Robin. The Crim Cross Star, said the Magpie, delighted. The humans use them to get things. Once a year, they take a spiky old tree, cover it with beautiful rubbish, and then put a crim cross star on the top and make a wish. In the morning, they get anything they want. Anything, muttered Robin, dreaming of crumbs. Um, and right there and then, she had an idea. I'll get us that star, she chirped. So, they think that the star on the top of a Christmas tree is a magical wishing star. Is that how it works? I'm not sure they've got that right. I'll leave no trace. I'll go at tiptoe pace when I sneak into the human house. I'll keep to the shadows and I'll never be seen. I'll be as quiet as a... Have a look. Can you see Robin and Robin sneaking into the human house? Can you see Robin and Robin climbing the tree? Can you see anything else in the tree? Did any of you see the eye that was looking? Uh-oh, who could that be? Help, chirped Robin. Um, chirped Robin above the sound of smashing and crashing and growling as the cat clawed higher up the tree. Fly, squawked the magpie. I can't, said Robin. I never learnt. Flying's easy. Just flap your wings. And although it didn't feel like something a sneaky mouse would do, Robin raised both her wings and flapped. With a chirp and a smash and a flutter and a crash, Robin flew out of the window. Can you see her go? Wow, she can do it. She can fly. If she was a mouse, would she be able to fly and get away? No, it's a good thing she's a robin. Landing with a thump at the end of the garden, she looked back at the mess she'd made. Oh, I'll never be sneaky, sighed Robin. Magpie gazed up at his crim cross tree, now complete with a crim cross star. He squeezed his eyes shut and squawked to himself, I wish for things, the shinier, the better. But Robin was quiet. She knew in her heart that her problems couldn't be solved by the crumbliest of crumbs. Right then and there, she had a better idea. I wish I was a real mouse, chirped Robin. She squeezed her eyes shut, held her breath, and waited for her feathers to turn into paws. Can you see her wishing? Magpie wants lots and lots of shiny things, but Robin wants to be a mouse. Is that gonna work? Is that how Christmas tree stars work? I don't think so. But when she opened again, them again, her wings were still wings. And there were no shiny presents for Magpie either. Maybe the Crim Cross Star didn't work at all. Then Robin heard a voice. There she is, Robin. The family emerged from the brambles. We've been searching for you all night. We followed the star. Where have you been, said Dad. Robin shuffled her feet in the snow. I went to get some crumbs. But I'm no good at sneaking, she said. If anything, I just draw attention to myself. And right then and there, she had an idea. I've got it. Follow me, follow me, chirped Robin, Robin. Can you see? All the family came to find her. They were worried, weren't they? But now Robin, Robin has had a good idea. She's no good at being quiet. What can she do to help everyone? Outside the human house, the mice hid in the shadows, 
while Robin Robin stepped forward and cleared her throat. <clears throat> then, with a chirp and a smash and a flutter and a crash, Robin scrambled up onto the windowsill. Hey, over here, look at me, she chirped, flapping and singing as loudly as a bird. The cat leapt up on the window ledge to watch, while the hunter, in the shadows, the mice filled their paws with lovely crumbs. Can you see? So Robin Robin made the cat go to the window and the mice could sneak in and take as many crumbs as they wanted. That was a really good plan, wasn't it? Inside the burrow, all was well as the family feasted on the crumbs. Bread crumbs, whispered Dad. Pie crumbs, murmured Pip. Biscuit crumbs, breathed Dink. The crumblier the better, chirped Robin Robin. Can you see them all? They're having a lovely Christmas feast together. So in the end, Robin Robin realised it was good to be different. It was good to be herself. She didn't have to be a mouse. She could be a bird. And that way she could help the family. And that's what we've got to do, isn't it? We are all different and we are different for a reason. We're supposed to be different. And that way we can all help each other. I hope you enjoyed the story. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Simple and thus, follow them close, you could steal a crust. Or a crumpet rye, and you find all the grease from the tip of a turkey french fry. Crumbs and crumbs.